the common questions these days is the whole issue of, can I trust my Bible? I mean, after all, there are so many mistakes in the Greek manuscripts that we use for translating the New Testament that you can't trust uh, it at all. Common charge. It actually is a charge that's been made over the years, and it kind of goes out of fashion, then someone brings it back up and it goes for another five years. Uh, right now, Bart Ehrman is one of the main proponents of this whole issue. And he will say things like there are up to 400,000 mistakes, errors, in the Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. More mistakes than there are words. And it leaves you with the impression that you can't trust a single word of the New Testament because all these mistakes. And he'll focus in on the woman caught in adultery in John 8 and the longer ending in Mark 16 verses 9 and following and say these two very large passages uh, were not originally written by John or Mark, and yet they're in the Bible, and it just shows that we can't trust it. Now, simplification of Professor Ehrman's position, but in a few minutes, let me say uh, some things about it. Uh, when the original uh, documents were written, they probably started within 20 years of Jesus' death, not that in an oral culture where they valued memory and repetition, and all teaching was done by repetition. Uh, 20 years is relatively little time for the stories to be told and retold. I know if you do it today, uh, in 20 years, people can often not remember anything. But in a culture like uh, you had in Jesus' day, in Paul's day, where everything was repetition, everything that used the mind, uh, they valued exact memory. And so these, the stories of what Jesus did and the stories of what Jesus taught, they were remembered, they were repeated. You had all the people uh, in making sure that the, the corporate memory was accurate. But eventually they started writing these things down. And when like Mark wrote his gospel, he was, we believe he was in Rome, and people wouldn't want to have copies of it. Well, didn't have photocopy machines. And so these copies were all made by hand. And as the copies were made, thousands and thousands of them, and we have them today and we start looking at them and compare them, you see that there are differences. For example, in uh, the chapter of the, of the man by the pool. He says, you laid by the pool by 38 years. And Jesus said, you know, why are you here? And if you just read that, you go, wait a minute, what happened to the verse about the angel coming down and stirring up the water? Well, NIV, ESV, none of the modern translations have verse 4. And that's because it was added century, a few centuries after John actually wrote. This is, this is the kind of issue that we're dealing with. But the, the problem is that, yes, there are differences among manuscripts, but we have a whole science called textual criticism. And I like to say that textual critics either are textual critics or they have a life. Because <laughs> you, you can't have a life and be a textual critic. I mean, it's so hard. It's so exacting. You, you have to know so much information that uh, it tends to engulf people's lives. And they will look supposedly at these 400,000 mistakes. Well. That's 400,000 spread over 25,000 different Greek fragments, uh, Greek gospels, translations, quotations from the early church fathers. I mean, we have the Bible in many, many, many well, 25,000 or so different forms. And so all of a sudden, the fact that there are 40,000 differences among these 25,000 different manuscripts and, and translations, I think it works out something like there's six questions per manuscript. Only six. So in other words, if you're looking at a manuscript, the vast majority of it is going to be the same as the vast majority of other manuscripts and other traditions. Uh, the, the problem has been overstated. And the other problem, too, is that uh, when Ehrman looks at the woman caught in adultery and the longer ending of Mark, those are the only two passages that are more than two verses long. Uh, about half of those 400,000 or whether you put on Greek, you put in what's in, in Greek, what's an N at the end. Uh, it's called a movable new, and it doesn't affect meaning at all. And some people have the new, the N, and other people don't. But it registers as uh, tens of thousands of these supposedly 400,000 mistakes. All that to say is that the, the number 400,000 is greatly exaggerated. There are very, very few passages where we were really not confident what the Bible says. And it has to do with that new, it has to do with spellings and names. We're not completely sure where there's Bethsaida, Bethesda, or Bethesda. I think there's seven different spellings. We don't, not for dead sure whether it's the Gergesenes demoniac or the Gadarenes demoniac. But the, the conclusion of all of this is that the vast majority of scholars are 
absolutely convinced that 99% of our Greek manuscripts are authentic. They are what Mark wrote, they are what Paul wrote. Uh, textual criticism has done a very good job at helping us get back through these variations to finding what most likely was originally written. So we have, when we sit down on the ESV or the NIV committee, we don't even for a moment question uh, the Greek manuscripts. We are confident that this is what the original authors wrote. But I would say secondly, that 1%, you know, the new or the other things, that we're not completely sure of, none of it affects a single major biblical doctrine. Not one. There is no major biblical doctrine, or I would say even minor biblical doctrine, that's brought into question by variations among the Greek manuscripts. They, they just aren't. I mean, you know, Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration. The, de the disciples have not been able to exercise the demons. Uh, and the boy, they're not sure why. And Jesus says, well, this kind can only come out except by, well, King James says prayer and fasting. All modern translations will say prayer. Well, the question is, is and fasting, is that part of the text or not? Well, for us, it doesn't affect our doctrine of fasting at all. I mean, I wouldn't go to that verse to develop a theology of fasting. I'd go to the verses that I know for sure and talk about fasting to develop my doctrine of fasting. But all that to say is that 1% where well, we're not completely sure, we're pretty sure, when well, we're not completely sure, contains no major biblical doctrine, no minor biblical doctrine, uh, it doesn't bring the Christian faith into question at all. So you can trust your Bibles because the translators do, translate, uh, do trust the Greek text.